Okay, we've only got time for two or three questions, but it would be wrong if I didn't start with Claire. Claire, nice house. <laughs> right one. Celebrity, but not rich, as you might have gathered. Um, uh, yeah, the, um, I like your balance there, but just I suppose the main thing is a lot of people pose this as a kind of suspicious, you know, that, that there is a danger that even though I'm a de- defender of privacy, that people get paranoid. And when you talk about this, a lot of people talk about Big Brother and big corporates all out to get you. But apart from the fact that you found your sister, I mean, there is presumably more positive gains to this. I mean, could you just talk about that a little bit? Or do you think we should be scared, very scared? I mean, that's what uh, the balance. I don't think we should be scared, very scared. I think we should understand that it is profoundly different and that if consumers can wake up to the fact that it's different and they need to engage with their own digital identity, we all have one, let's understand it and engage with it, uh, we can get power over that digital identity. So it can open up opportunities. It can get you jobs. It can get you to meet people. Um, We did some research recently where we asked people what sort of decisions they make about other people looking online first. And you were talking about curtain twitching earlier. I think there's some sort of um, digital curtain twitching. Um, 16% of the respondents, about 2,000 respondents, said that before they move into a flat or a house, they will do this on their (laughs) neighbours to see who who they are. 20% of parents said that when they go and visit a school and they've got the name of the teacher who's going to be their child's teacher, they go home and have a look online and see what they're they're like. 30-odd percent said if they're hiring a uh, doctor, a lawyer, any sort of professional, they're, they're going to go online. So actually, this kind of world can put power back into the hands of individuals. The natural place for it to go is to government, is to huge, well-funded organisations. But if individuals realise that actually it can come back in this direction as well, it's a different world and you can get a lot of power. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a quick question before I bring in uh, our other panellists. Uh, I want a yes, no, or maybe answer to this question. Are, is the big digital divide of the future going to be people who can afford to pay someone like you to manage their identity online versus people who can't? No. Fine, thank you. Okay, Ian. Let's look for 10 years. Is it going to be impossible if you want to effectively be totally private, if you want to disappear, it will be impossible to do so, won't it? Yes. Yeah. It will, in 10 years' time, I doubt there will be anyone in an industrialised, in in a digital uh, economy that I won't be able to find out a ton of stuff about. My sister, my oldest sister, said, I've never been online. I never used the computer. I find stuff on her anyway. It's not stuff she's put out there herself. First marriage isn't debt. Your bank says mother's maiden name. The government says here's everyone's mother's maiden name. <laughs> it's, it, there's just stuff is flowing out there, and 10 years you can't hide. You live in an open world. So, Stephen, isn't there a big difference between um, people who exercise public and private functions? I mean, lawyers, accountants, dentists, doctors, teachers—they're all public in the sense that they're doing a public job. And there's a big difference between that and what people can find out about you as a private individual in your in your private life first question second question um, how do we gain power here I mean if it's going to be this kind of different how do we actually regain power yeah um, so I think for the first question there's a big difference there is sort of there ought to be a big difference but in terms of the technology there is no difference um, and there I don't think there is any sort of regulation that any one country can put in place that can enforce uh, that difference because um, you can you know, find out the information from some other country. So you look at Zoom Info, it's an American site, it's hoovering up UK people's information and putting it into its site, um, whether they like it or not. So, um, and it's just everybody, anybody and everybody. It's, it's trying to build the biggest, you know, hundreds of millions of people in its, in its database. So I think that they're, they're in, in some ways there ought to be a difference, and we might have debates about that, but the technology, um, there, there isn't a difference. It's all there. Um, uh, on, the, on the second point, I think the, the way that we gain power is through, if we can, is through understanding. I think there are some laws that I would like to see, for example, around the data protection laws, I would like much stronger laws to know what you hold about me. Um, I would definitely have more power because I used to run uh, technology for for one of the largest uh, um, online banks, if not the largest online bank in the world, Um, and you hold a ton of stuff about people. Um, uh, But if you knew that they could ask at any time, you know, what have you got about me and what decisions are you making based on it? 
it would change behavior quite markedly. Um, and, you know, I've done that a fair bit, issued subject access requests just to see what sort of stuff people hold on me. And it's amazing the stuff that, that, that comes back. That you, you know, you know they have no idea why they're holding it. You know, Institute of Directors, just very briefly, Institute of Directors, so I write to them and say, what do you hold on me? And they come back and they say, uh, you know, the date you joined, your credit card details, blah, blah. And by the way, going back 10 years, down to the second, every time you've been in and out of every one of our buildings. So, you know, pages and pages of you went in then, you came out then, you went. And I'm sure they have no sort of real idea why they hold that information until somebody says, actually, we could sell that to someone, and then they will. So, uh, so I think that giving us as consumers some of those sort of laws that let us look at other people, other organizations in the government in a way that they can look at us is one of the ways that we can get some power back in the equation. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Tom. Thank you.